Future Diary is weird. In case that confused you, this woman just shot rockets out of her ass, which were actually smoke bombs that summon a flying motorcycle. She was also wearing a cute anime girl dress. I think that's what made the 2010s beautiful. It was a time where you could have a girl shoot rockets out of her pooper and still have your anime become one of the most popular anime of all time. Almost everyone who watches anime knows of this show. It's marinated into pop culture like a pimple, while at the same time, every conflict has the easiest solution ever. You scream at your monitor, Do this! Do this, main guy! What, what the fuck?! People commit genocide one episode and everyone forgets about it the next. There's almost no anime at this level of popularity that's also this terribly written. Which is why, as someone who didn't finish it as a kid, I loved re-watching it for all the reasons listed above. There's something special about a show that just don't work right, and I think a lot of people either don't remember how insane the show was or haven't seen it at all. So hopefully, I can help you see this show through my eyes. Let's pick apart the episodes, analyze the characters, and rewatch the anime that shook the world. For some reason... The god of time and space, Deus, is reaching the end of his life cycle. To pick a new successor, the god of time and space has devised a Battle Royale. Please God put Chun-Li in there. Twelve people are given a future diary, which informs each participant of future events. Some get intel on how they escape sticky situations, others get fragments at random. It's up to every participant to try and be the last man standing and become the new god. And who else is Deus's first pick other than Piddles, our main character? Piddles is a good old-fashioned dumb f The classic wimp protag. You know how nowadays every main character is an edgelord serial grapist? Yep. That's an overcorrection for this guy. Thanks, Piddles. His days aren't spent doing anything important aside from writing every possible detail into his phone's notes app. For example, one day he writes, The rock is there. Let's walk to the right of it today. <laughs> On a day like any other, he gets back from school, puts a blanket over his head, and starts speaking to God, who's like, Piddles! My name is Yuki My Teru. name is Yuki. Piddles, you were writing dumb shit in your Samsung Raspberry again. You know I see that, right? Yeah. Then why the fuck did you... Anyway, Piddles, I see you're wildly insecure. Why are you doing this to me? I see you're wildly insecure, and so to fix your character issues, I've decided to give you a big present. Is it? No, it is not herpes again. Then he sends Piddles back to Earth with a future diary, without telling him what it is. Which is a massive mistake, because only Piddles could receive a future-telling device from God, notice that it's entirely accurate numerous times throughout the day, and still be like, What? It's almost like this is... real. Immediately, his first thought is to cheat in class, which is normal, but in all my days, I have never seen someone cheat in such a subprimal way. This guy is clearly on his phone. Oh, that bitch is crazy. Yep. Yep, she is crazy. I want one. Give me a crazy pink-haired girl now. Now! Piddles, on the other hand, is like, Oh god, this hoe is crazy. Do you want to do a tarot reading? No, no, no thank you. I'm good at it! My diary is telling me I'm going to be killed by a serial killer. But actually, meet Yuno. The bitch is crazy. A long time ago, Piddles made a promise to go stargazing with her, and ever since, she has stalked and taken meticulous notes on his every action. So God has given her the Piddles Diary, which updates her on his actions every 10 minutes. Wait, if you're not the serial killer, let's get out of here! Here's the pickle. Piddles is a beta male. There's no avoiding that. And Yuno is one crazy lady, so Pickles is extremely scared of her. But! You know is willing to do all the work that Piddles is too scared to do, such as instructing him to sit in a little corner and wait for the bad guy. And on her mark, BAM! Piddles breaks the bad guy's diary using his future prediction. Wait, if we break people's diaries, we get a second butthole? You know. Yes? I need you to break my diary. What didn't work about this episode is, uh, that whole f***ing plan shouldn't have happened. Like, you are being chased by a serial killer who knows all of your next moves. This guy just walks up to your location and is like, Oh, where could they be? Mother you tell me! You should have known since before you hopped out of the elevator. This is where I realize the caliber of show we're dealing with. It kicks off with Piddles thinking, All right, the bitch is crazy, but I have no nuts. I'm scared of the dark, a Herobrine, and asserting myself. Maybe I'll get to live if I stick around with her. Let's ask. Can we, like, uh, talk for a sec? Right now really isn't the best time. I'm gonna be late for P.E. Well, that fucked my whole thing up. Sorry, can you maybe help me? This is absolutely a main character. Oh! 
Oh, Jesus! She f***s up 50 students, but Piddle survives because he was hugged really good. And this is where I started thinking, if you wanted to assassinate one person, maybe bombs are a little retarded. Uryu was right in front of him. He's 14, you know. Improvise. Anyway, Piddles is rattled from the explosion until he says this dialogue, which is too funny to ever dub over. You know, I, I need you to get me through this. For you, sweetheart, anything. I'm not using her. I'm utilizing. I really wish I wrote that. Now this chick is outside announcing her full name, address, and Christmas list to the entire student body. Apparently, she set up motion sensor bombs throughout the entire school. Game plan time. You know, instructs Piddles on exactly what to do again. We can use our diaries to know exactly which areas are unsafe. Piddles, stop fucking crying. Piddles, stop crying right now. We gotta go. I know him. I'm sorry, what? Piddles, are, are you running to your <laughs> class, bully? <laughs> you know, help me! Good old fashioned dumb f remember? He gets taken by Uryu, who sets up a deal with his classmates. All the while, Yuno looks around and realizes they didn't draw these characters good. Which means they're all filler! Yeah. Damn! Chief, look at this! I'm going in. You let 400 students get eviscerated before sending in the police? That's actually quite accurate. We're gonna go ahead and award our first good writing point. This new guy is the owner of the Crime Diary, which predicts the events of ongoing crime cases. Uryu knows this, and so to draw him out, she prepares this entire scheme. Blow the little bastard's brains out, then do yourself! Hmm. Don't take it personally. Wait, it officer! I'm not blo- Piddles is like, Duh. And then the show gets crazier, and fall damage doesn't exist, so the cop is like, uh, I guess I won't kill us. Just as long as you kick that purple bitch's ass. So Piddles actually does, because of Yuno's instructions. Actually, please don't. Please don't. Please don't. He did it, then Uryu is like, ah! I'll get you! What did we just- if you were paying attention, you're wondering how Ninth, Uryu, figured out that Piddles was the first diary holder. Excellent! The end credit scene actually explains this. The fourth and ninth were originally after the serial killer. The police guy even questions Piddles at the start of the story for that case. But then, the serial killer was killed by Piddles, which tells them both that it had to be him. The writers now expect us to go, Yo! That is the terrorist! Next to one of the lead investigators, she just wearing glasses! How? In any fucking way, does Pills killing this guy end up revealing anything? The way I recall it, the guy turned into a giant butthole and disappeared. Where's the evidence? And if this guy has the crime diary, shouldn't he have monitored the crime minnow and protected Piddles? Or, when Forth planted hundreds of bombs on a middle s***, you didn't check your fucking LG Optimus Zone 3 and think, hmm, maybe I could save those kids from her. She is a different kind of stupid. She wants to lure this guy out because somehow she knows his abilities and profession, so her idea is to blow up so many kids he can't ignore it. In the process, she makes sure to announce her full identity with no concealment so she can be hunted by the entirety of Japan until the day she dies. Uh, bitch, steal some chapstick like a normal person. This plan is ass. What matters is she seemed to enjoy it. Let's enjoy episode 8 right after we found. Pickles sees some dead bodies in Yuno's closet. Oh my god! I am surprised by this information. The gang goes to a cult and finds out that the blind leader girl is actually a diary holder, but she's like, It's chill, I don't want to kill anybody actually. And then there was fire! Gas the mattresses now! You idiot! You're using gasoline! Stop! What in the was I doing something? You know carries piddles like usual, the blind girl turns out to be evil and wants to become god so she can erase the world, which I don't understand because no one in her cult is like, Oh, that's what we're doing? That's a- that's a stupid ass plan, this is- Ray, calm down. No, f calm down, like, like, why would she erase the world? I'm in it. They kill her, the cop teams up with the terrorist who killed 400 people, next up- Oh my god, I forgot the best character. He dies pretty quick. Next episode, Yuno happens to have killed two cultists who happened to birth the world's most evil and intelligent child who happens to be a diary holder that gets adopted by Piddles' mom who happens to be in town that week. Yuno tries to kill the little bastard, but then 
Oh, it gets worse. The kid orders a poison gas trap and a gas mask and antidotes for the poison, and he's trapped the entire house. He's five years old. Where is this income coming from? This was really cool, though. After they kill the guy, Ninth saves Piddles. Remember when she blew up those little guys? Finally, we've caught up to Emma. You know when Piddles have conspired to kill a child and put his mother in a coma, the mental weight begins to close in on Piddles, who's actually more concerned about his social anxiety for his big day at school. Oh, Piddles. A room full of perfect strangers. How awesome is that? If you don't want to be bullied, this is not how you walk. He is bullied immediately, if that's what we call telling the truth. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and bet mm, a gazillion dollars that this bitch, uh, owns one of the fucking diaries. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and change my answer because this bitch uh, has a camera. Anybody who's not important to the story will not have any character design, so I think she might be a diary holder. Or maybe they're both diary holders. Characters find out that a string of serial murders have once again come to their small town. The bodies mangled into unrecognizable chunks of meat. What I'm about to play for you next is the unedited video after these four choose to investigate the crime scene. Is that Spongebob music? The entire time, Yuno is like, this is a place of murder, we should not be here. Come on, let's go. There's a diary user somewhere nearby. It's ability! Shut up! Peanuts is the first spring I've ever made. I'm not about to turn tail and run. I've known these people for minutes. Get off my back, bitch! Meanwhile, Boob Girl is like, yeah, I want to wander off into the forest. Piddles finds out through his diary and dashes to save her. What he sees next is honestly extremely disturbing. Please, God, God have mercy anything but that. <laughs> Dogs with metal mouths. Dogs with teeth are the villain of this episode. Luckily, some guy comes to save them, but Piddles is like really shocked for some reason. But your shaking is adorable. <laughs> So the gang's like, quick, run into a corner, we can outrun dogs! It's clear that this is a trap set up by a diary holder. Piddles can save everyone with a diary exposing his identity or do nothing and simply die. This is not the fucking reason you should avoid telling them about your diary. The day is saved, but just to piss the audience off... Oh my god. Whoa, she is fucking pissed too. And before that can even piss you off, this happens. I was so right. I was so fucking right. I was wrong. A little bit. They're both evil, but the diary owner is her dad who doesn't want to fight because if he dies, uh, he can't play with his dogs. He sends his human daughter. Anyway, they got Piddles wiggling, but turns out they're actually after this guy's diary. So this guy is like, why don't we play a game in exchange for each other's stuff? Then they lose. Bitch stabs bitch, we win! But earlier, Piddle said, You know what? I like you guys. We should do this more. So now you're supposed to be sad when she's like, Boo hoo. She was my only friend in the entire world. Everything is meaningless and cold. I'm gonna make the dogs eat those people. They're skedaddling when Piddles has a bright idea. Hey, what if we try to save her? She's only trying to kill us. You go on without me. There's no way in hell we're gonna outrun a pack of dogs, and you know it. You've done it, like, four times. They finally catch up to the girl, and Yuno tries killing her ass, because why not? And this is where Piddles is like, uh oh, psychotic is tremendous. I mean, this is what made Johnny Depp stay after all, but holy cow, this chick is nutty as squirrel She's gonna kill my new friends, but conversely, she does all the work for me, because I am scared of things. Maybe if I, that's it. If I wife her up, maybe she'll f off for now. This is Yuno Gasai, my uh, girlfriend. 
Yuki, you so just... everyone forgets what happened and it all works out happily ever after. Yo, Piddles, what do you think of this? Now what? What the yeah, hell have damn. I gotten myself? This episode ends better than probably anything ever because at the end Hino apologizes to her dad for failing, but he says to her, nah, it's all good. She replies, but don't you want to become God and do everything all over for your family? To which her dad replies, nah, I just really fucking like dogs. Don't you agree? What did we- Remember how the Risenator was able to get those girls to follow his schemes? That was weird, huh? Let me lay this out for you. They have a hostage, Piddles' diary, and an army of dogs. These are their bargaining chips for this guy's diary, which he doesn't even have. I suppose that when Christopher Columbus asks them to play a game, this bewilders the stupid b****s into agreement because this deal makes no sense. You control hundreds of dogs, wouldn't a better deal be, I'm gonna open this door so dogs eat you and take your shit, which basically happens after the good guys win the game anyway. And Piddles. Piddles, you stupid munching head doo doo face hard you I can't believe what you've done this episode. Bills doesn't save people because he's a good person, or even because he likes the people he's trying to save. He does it because he's scared of being alone. Even to the point that it overrides his fear of death. Why would you just tell the guy who's bullied you your entire life about this mystical device given to you by God? The bully's not even there for you, he's here for the hot chicks! I could tear these episodes apart one by one until we hit the end of the series. In fact, that's what I want to do. But to keep things pushing, we're gonna have to start... Nothing I've said so far makes any sense, but that's only because I've summarized the plot pretty accurately. Things don't need a reason to happen. The writers just need to put their hands in a circle and say, okay, three, two, one, fuck it, who cares? I was gonna detail some examples, but watching this mostly unedited conversation between a policeman and Yuno does all the talking for me. It's just a couple of routine questions, all right? The bones we found at your house, they, uh, well, two of the skeletons belong to your parents, so that's solved at least. That's solved? Bro, what the fuck is solved about what you just said? Excuse me? She's walking! She's getting away! If the characters need to get away from something, they absolutely will. On one episode, the gang shoots the police. No one remembers after a while. You know Rufy's piddles and tries to kill all of his friends. This is forgotten after a while. There's no cause and effect. There's effect and then effect. And actually, we're on a different show now, and I've decided that in the end, you know becomes a half-god and goes to another dimension to kill that Yuno and take her place, but Piddles is being carried by a three-quarters god from his own dimension, and then Yuno kills herself, so he becomes the real god when he goes back home, but then Murmur, who's trapped in a cage, psychically calls out to a completely different Yuno of this dimension, and for some fucking reason, this completely different version of Yuno is like, there's something missing from me. Okay, fuck it, fuck logic, let's roll with it. She's like, there's something missing for me. So she abandons her completely happy world to go to the secret cave of God's secret dimension so she can go to old Murmur, accept memories of a completely different version of herself who's been tortured, starved had to death, and made insane, and for some reason, that gives her the power to cleave through dimensions and be with Piddles forever. This happens because if it didn't, Piddles and Yuna wouldn't be together in the end. That's what it means to write yourself into a corner. When you write yourself into a corner, you put your characters in a situation that only bullshit can solve. For example, when Kirito loses his cyber daughter and he gets so mad that, uh, I'm a software engineer now. What is, what is this shit? I can't read it. But I can read loading bar. Uh! This is the vibe I'm talking about. The entirety of Future Diary hinges on characters acting on knowledge they shouldn't have, people making 180s for no reason at the perfect time, the entire Japanese government <sighs> sleeping when it's convenient. Otherwise, the show doesn't work. Have you guys noticed how every bad guy has unlimited funding and prep time for evil? <laughs> His jacket is bomb-proof. There's a baby who buys pre-made poison traps that look like envelopes. Where did this chick get motion sensor bombs? Now Piddles has an MP5. Every single character has exactly what they need to advance the plot. What the f The characters in the show either don't develop or make complete 180s. You have to not think of them as people. Remember when this chick kills 8,000 and deeply enjoys it. In the span of one episode, she goes from severely mentally ill to super misunderstood. Aww, those must have been nervous giggles. The story then tries to paint her in this light that's like, Boo hoo, they took my eye and I have nowhere to go. 
no one will ever love me. Yes. Here's her with the police officer who's arresting her for terrorism. Whatever, you look cute. Uh, uh, shithead. She blew up a... I think you'd make a wonderful mom. Mm. Mm. Then God, remember that guy who thought Piddles was cool? He looks at this deranged woman and says, you're the perfect candidate to give half my power and knowledge to. Then she sacrifices herself for the main character because he reminds her of herself as a child. Then she comes back to life because she was fake dead before. And this is the part where the show becomes Dragon Ball Z. Then she dies for real in a heroic sacrifice for our main character. When actually the whole time she was alive for no reason at all. I'm stupid, I hate everything. Did I mention she's pregnant as f by the police officer? So now she's married off in a universe where her husband is hunting down a parallel version of herself who did all the exact same crimes. Who do you never faces accountability for anything she's done? And there's certainly no scene where she's like, you know what? The world ain't so bad after all. I'm done with evil. I fear that if I talk about Piddles, I will snap. If you've ever done a group project and had one guy just sign his name on the paper and not do anything, you know Piddles on a personal level. Every episode can be boiled down to conflict. Piddles freaks out and talks like courage. <laughs> until Yuno solves the problem. It gets to the point where even his mortal enemies get frustrated and spend an entire arc trying to fix him. When a girl is in trouble, you jump through fire, and if there's a knife or a bullet, you take it. Why are you so spineless, huh? No, it's not my fault. She told me I could use her. If I'm checking someone and their immediate response is, <laughs> I already know I'm not conversing with an equal. But to then say, what did you say again, Piddles? She told me I could use her. Why did you say that? But there is a turning point in this character. His dad stabs his awesome mom. So he's like, Dad, whoa, what the f***? Why did you stab mom? Son, I don't know, but I bought you a cool telescope. Will you forgive me? Yeah, why not? I'm very scared of being alone. I'll do anything to avoid someone being mad at me and ending our relationship. Shut up, Piddles. Yeah, I should shut up. <laughs> After that, he decides, all right, I'm cool now. I'll kill everyone, become God, rewind time, and bring everyone back. The next episode, he's walking around like he's the shit. There's confidence. Mwah. Kiss me, bitch. I got a speech to give. This is what you watch the show for. It took 19 episodes, but Piddles bossed up. He was also reading a script entirely written by Yuno. That's not even the worst part. <laughs> The funding for Mother's House comes straight out of Have City you ever Hall. noticed that guys in anime are like, Oh no! Breasts! No, no, no! Please, please, please! Don't show me those! While guys in real life are like, Wait, you'll just let me sniff your ass? Alright! Anyway, he does kill people and get things done. Because you know is coordinating every last detail. There's nothing Piddles does in this show that you aren't capable of. He's being carried. Even in the end, when you know is that half-god thing, he gets saved by Uryu, and then again, and then again, and then, instead of killing Yuno, she does it herself and hands him the Vic Roy. Great job, Piddles! What are you going to do with your god power- Oh, stare at your phone for 10,000 years. That's exactly what I thought. I don't have much more to say about Piddles except the reason I've occasionally been using the dub is because they've casted perhaps the most Caucasian man on the planet. Are you yanking my chain? I keep expecting this guy to say things like, holy smokes, or Latinx, stuff only white people say. The future Diary is terrible for more reasons than I can list. I haven't even addressed big woman yet. Look how huge this woman is. Yet there's something more criminal than the plot holes and the crazy chick and piddles, all of it. Future Diary's biggest crime is how goddamn popular it is. The show is bad, but I still enjoyed it for the wrong reasons. I digress. It was at one point the ninth most popular anime on Mal. It's currently sitting at 32nd. So what reason could the show possibly have to be that popular? Well, were you listening to the summary? The concept is kind of cool. There's 12 people you need to beat and everyone can see the future. How do you counter that? Then the winner gets to become God and there's this crazy chick in the mix, but she's kind of cool. So who kills who? At the very least, the idea was sick and it helped drive the death game genre to where it is today. I've mentioned at some point that this show turns into another one. Yeah, this, this is weird. 
situation. That's where I realized the art is great. When Yuno is carving through people like bananas in a black dress for no reason, you're not thinking, oh, why don't they just shoot her? At least not in 2011 we weren't. The digital age has put humanity in a hyperbolic time chamber. As technology has grown, art has never been more accessible. Every year, it feels like there are more and more shows than the last. Your phone cameras get better, games look better, and so our standards have risen exponentially. What was peak five years ago might be antiquated garbage by tomorrow. Double the time span, and it's like looking into another dimension. Future Diary is that old garbage from 10 years ago. For its time, it shined brilliantly, but with age, it blah 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 blah. Not everything ages terribly, but Future Diary is one of those things that was a product of its time. The death game genre wasn't half as saturated. Now every season we have some stupid ass death game that doesn't even look better than this. The main characters have gotten better though. This is one of the most important anime ever. If you type Yandere into Google, you're gonna see Yuno. Know. Does that change my opinion that it's terrible? Absolutely not. This character fucking T-poses! Always! But it's a part of most of our childhoods, and it felt great to finally finish. Some of you will think I'm brave for criticizing such a popular show, and others will be angry. And to that, I say, I'm not brave. It's a fucking cartoon. I didn't know we needed bravery. Sponsored by Nord. Christmas is a wonderful time of year. You know, I was the last kid to stop believing in Santa. So I was in the middle of class having this fucked up identity crisis because the gears had started turning. Anyway, I love Christmas, but this year, Christmas was ruined because I kept forgetting to ask Nora to renew my subscription. God damn, do I use that app a lot. I routinely Google weird things. During the making of this video, I got sidetracked and just stared at images of Chun-Li for a few minutes like I was hypnotized. Then I became self-aware and thought, wow, this is something I would really not like anyone else knowing about. And if you've ever had that thought, a VPN is for you. I like to use Nord because they obfuscate your internet usage from anyone trying to take a peek. While you have a VPN active, your internet service providers, parents, or schools have next to no idea what you're looking at. But that's not all. If you've ever been throttled by your ISP, wanted to watch shows not available in your region, and prevent getting DDoS from an online game, NordVPN can help solve all of the above. Now, there's even a new threat protection feature dedicated to scanning your files and helping you avoid malware. If you're interested, Nord has given me a special link that you can use for a huge discount. Thanks for watching. See ya.